Hello, Andre W. And uh, this video is just really an answer to a question which was posted a few days ago by Damon BTC, who uh, said, uh, a quick question, does current have the same effect on a conductor or fuse regardless of voltage? And uh, this was on the video about those fake 15 amp fuses which were being tested with the various currents being put through them to see uh, when and if they actually failed. And the answer to the question is, uh, yes, it does, because the uh, voltage across the thing is really what determines the current through the fuse. But uh, there is another issue involved there, which uh, is the actual open circuit voltage when the fuse actually fails. So let's have a quick look at that and uh, a bit of an explanation as to what's going on there. Now, the video in question uh, was a fairly simple setup just to uh, test the various fuses. So what we had was the offending 15 amp fake fuse. And we had a power supply with the uh, wire going in. And then the other end of the fuse was actually just connected back to the power supply. And that was an AC supply, and it was actually variable in terms of its voltage. So, of course, the uh, adjusting the voltage here would actually adjust the current flowing through the fuse. And that's how it's actually controlled. And that particular setup can go from uh, either nothing up to around 30 amps, more than plenty to cause those 15 amp fuses to fail. Now, because the uh, actual path here is a uh, very low resistance, the uh, voltage required, of course, here to get a substantial current flowing in the sort of 10 or 20 amps range, it's only a couple of volts at most. And that's a good safety feature because obviously if you uh, touch down these parts, there's no danger of getting a shock. And it was also an isolated supply in the case of the uh, particular one that was being used. But of course, this is not a uh, normal sort of situation. You wouldn't normally just have a fuse uh, directly across a supply and you would have some kind of appliance in there. But it doesn't actually matter particularly because although the uh, voltage across the fuse is uh, very small in the order of only one volt or something, the uh, current going through is what actually matters. And the heating effect uh, in terms of the uh, resistance and the current going through will of course be exactly the same. Now of course in a normal circumstance you would have uh, some kind of an appliance there and you would have a uh, much higher voltage, say uh, 240 volts in there. And then you would have your fuse, some kind of an appliance here. Let's say it was some sort of heating element in an electric heater. And again, it comes back to the supply. So we've got the supply there, fuse and heating element. Let's say that was sort of a three kilowatt electric fire. However, in this situation, the uh, current, of course, would still flow uh, through the circuit, although obviously most of the energy would be wasted in the electric heater over there. And although you've got 240 volts between these two points, you don't have 240 volts between here and here. And in this circumstance, the voltage here, again, is going to be extremely small, only in the order of sort of one volt or less, because most of the voltage is going to appear across the heating element here, so that's going to be the largest resistance in the circuit. So in terms of the current actually flowing through the circuit, it would obviously flow through and uh, obviously through the heating element, it's exactly the same situation because if we've got, say, 10 amps flowing through here, it wouldn't actually matter if, if there's a heater over here or if had anything over there, or even just a uh, wire coming back, the uh, current is still going to flow through there and the heating effect of that within the fuse is going to be exactly the same regardless of uh, what voltage you've got in the total system because the uh, voltage across the fuse here it's going to make, say, only going to be in the sort of order of one or less volts at any particular time. Most of the voltage, of course, will appear across the heating element. So in the example here, you might have, uh, say, uh, 240 here, probably sort of, say, 239 there, perhaps, depending on the uh, exact resistance of it, which is going to be extremely low. And then this will be your zero volts here. So the vast majority of the voltage is going to be across these two points, with only, say, sort of one volt or less across the resistance of the fuse element. Now, one major difference with this compared to the uh, sort of direct just with a couple of volts across is when the fuse actually fails. Because what will happen is that uh, if this fuse is broken due to it uh, overloading, we're still going to have 240 volts here, but uh, the voltage here now between these two points isn't just going to be one or two volts. It will actually be the full mains voltage. Since you've got a break in the circuit here, this of course is now a low resistance compared to this uh, massively open circuit, so this becomes your zero volt point. And since you've got two points with the full mains voltage between them, 
Now the difference in terms of a fuse is that uh, when the fuse actually melts, because you've got that higher voltage between the points, there's going to be a lot more of an arc possibility going on inside, and of course a lot more energy potential to uh, cause the fuse to rupture or, and explode. Now this is why uh, fuses used in that situation are made out of a ceramic material with a sand filling, because as soon as you've got that main voltage appearing between the two points, the uh, possibility of having an arc between those is uh, very high. And of course that's why the sand and things are in there to uh, remove the energy from that to make sure that the fuse does actually break reliably. And of course without the uh, water heater there and you have the uh, original situation with just a few volts across it in total, you wouldn't have those dangerous voltages because the total voltage to start with would only be say a couple of volts in total, so you might have sort of two volts there. So even when the fuse broke there you'd have two volts there and the same zero there, so you're going to have sort of a couple of volts across there even when it did break, so when it breaks in the sort of test situation not a great deal happens because uh, say a couple of volts, uh, no real danger of any arc or whatever occurring inside the fuse. So just a quick look there at the differences between having the full mains voltage available and of course just uh, say two or three volts in the testing setup and in terms of heating in the fuse or whatever conductor you've got such as some old bit of Mankey Flex or whatever, the uh, actual heating effect is going to be exactly the same regardless of what voltage you've got in the total system because we've got a sort of a load there of the uh, 240 volts. Most of the voltage is going to be across the load and not across the fuse. It's only going to be sort of one volt or something across the fuse itself regardless of what kind of total voltage you have in the system. And so the only difference really is when the fuse fails. In the case of the test setup, you've only got that still that couple of volts across the fuse. But in the uh, main situation, the full mains voltage will then appear across the fuse where the break is. And of course that's highly likely to cause an arc, which is why fuses are made of hard ceramic with a sand filling inside to quench the energy. And the equation for the amount of energy uh, dissipated in there is uh, what's on the board here, which is I squared R, which is basically current squared multiplied by the resistance of the device, or the fuse in this case. So as you see it doesn't actually involve voltage at all completely independent of that, it's purely the current and the resistance. And of course the uh, current is entirely dependent on the voltage across the fuse, so if you connected the fuse or anything up with say 240 volts across it, the current which would flow would be colossal, hundreds or even thousands of amps, and it would fail pretty much instantly. So uh, the voltage across the fuse is always going to be very small, simply as a function of the uh, equation which uh, determines the amount of power that's being dissipated there. So until next time, thanks for watching.